A really good movie cameo is like a fine wine. The best ones are the ones you never even knew were there. Wait, no, hang on. Uh, try that again. <clears throat> I like my movie cameos like I like my men. Famous. No, no, that doesn't work either. Hang on, third time lucky. Why is a movie cameo like a writing desk? Oh, sorry, here's a bunch of good ones. Let's get on with it. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com, and here are 10 unbelievable movie cameos you might have missed. Number 10, Brian Singer, Star Trek Nemesis. Star Trek Nemesis was one of the bad Star Trek movies. It involves a preposterously young Tom Hardy as a clone of Picard, silly June buggy chases, and was dark and gritty and super serious sci-fi to a degree that it slipped beyond silly into parody, beyond parody into boring, and beyond boring into sh**. I do not understand. It also features a cameo from Usual Suspects and X-Men director, Brian Singer. What? Yep, a big Star Trek fan, Singer used his newfound pal and Professor X, Patrick Stewart, to get him a brief walk-on part in the movie, briefly replacing Worf on the bridge. Recently, Singer also cameoed as a cameraman in his own movie, X-Men Days of Future Past. You can't keep him off the screen. Number nine, Matt Damon, Eurotrip. Oh, American Pie, you are responsible for so much. Namely, for unleashing the squealing mayhem of Sean William Scott upon the world. Step back, Harry. I'm gonna shoot him. No, stand down. I'm gonna kill this one myself. Give me a chance. I'm communicating here. And for inspiring a raft of copycat sex comedies like Road Trip, Boat Trip, and Euro Trip. Now, Euro Trip is a bland movie with one great moment a cameo from, no, seriously, that's actually him, Matt Damon. He cameos as Donny, a punk rocker who sings a song about sleeping with a guy's girlfriend right in front of him. The film is fairly poor and bafflingly came out two years after Matt Damon made a huge impact on Hollywood and the Bourne identity. Way to capitalise Matt. Matt Damon. Number eight, Kate Blanchett, Hot Fuzz. The first of two Hot Fuzz cameos on this list. This has to be up there in terms of filmmakers trolling their audience. After the huge success of Shaun of the Dead, which featured plenty of cameos in itself, the dream team of Peg, Frost and Wright set about making a second part of the Cornetto trilogy, this time pastiching buddy cop action movies. Peg played Nicholas Angel, seen here talking to Janine, his forensic scientist girlfriend. The woman behind the mask, Lord of the Rings Australian megastar and now two-time Oscar winner Kate Blanchett. To get someone of her stature in your movie only to completely cover her face is a ballsy move, but Blanchett was a big fan of Shaun of the Dead and, well, you don't say no to Queen Elizabeth. Number seven, Ian Brown, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. From Oscar winners to rock stars now, considering that the Potter movies dominated the cinematic landscape for over a decade, it's hard to name a British person who actually wasn't in one. Heck, you were probably in a Harry Potter film and you never even noticed. There was a particularly blink in your miss it cameo in Prisoner of Azkaban, however. As the camera pans across the scene in the leaky cauldron, a man can be seen magically stirring his coffee and reading a Stephen Hawking's book. That man, Ian Brown, lead singer of the Stone Roses. That makes sense. Nothing more rock and roll than Harry Potter. I guess. Number six, Ron Jeremy, Ghostbusters. Speaking of celebrities making departures from their usual line of work, Ron Jeremy is a man known for many things. Well, he's known for one thing, but that thing is the size of many things. He's the porn star with the big old friend and he's also in Ghostbusters. In the scene where the firehouse explodes, in the crowd watching the mayhem is the man himself, watching it happen, displaying all the acting talent for which porn stars are renowned. Was he just wandering past the set and asked to take part or were the creators a big fan of the man's body of work? Only Aykroyd and pals know and speaking of which, number five, Dan Aykroyd, Indiana Jones and a Temple of Doom. Between the Blues Brothers, Ghostbusters, Trading Places and Gross Point Blank, Dan Aykroyd's comedic legacy is assured, try as he might to dismantle it with dirge like Yogi Bear and Christmas with the Cranks. He's a man with a litany of brilliant roles under his belt, so how about the one you might not have spotted? In the beginning of Temple of Doom, before Indy and his two annoying sidekicks board a plane out of Shanghai, they are met by a thin man with a preposterous English accent. And when I say preposterous, it's posher and stupider than mine, and that's rare. The owner of the voice? Dan Aykroyd, who was in the film for all of 18 seconds. It was a very silly voice, but not as annoying as Willie Scott's. Number four, Glenn Close, Hook. Glenn Close was recently Oscar nommed for playing a woman living her life as a man in the box office bomb Albert Nobbs, but years before that, she dragged up for none other than Spielberg himself in Hook. Yep, not only was Dustin Hoffman completely unrecognizable in the underrated movie, but so was Close, sporting an entirely impressive beard, making a brief appearance as a pirate who would end up locked in the boo box. Hook and Albert Nobbs. Hook and Albert Nobbs. They are similar movies. Number three, Danny Glover, Maverick. Maverick is a 90s comedy western film starring the most popular man in the world, Mel Gibson. Remember the 90s? Remember how popular Mel used to be before little things like his beliefs or his behavior took all that away? Smile and blow me! 
In the film, Gibson plays Maverick, a card-playing con artist who, in one scene, runs afoul of a bank robber, played by none other than Danny Glover, Mel's partner in Not Crime from Lethal Weapon. In literally the best moment in the film, the two men seem to recognise each other as Sting from Lethal Weapon plays and Glover Scarpa's saying, for this Isn't it tragic when the best part of a film is when it references a different, better film? Number two, Peter Jackson, Hot Fuzz. Another Hot Fuzz treat, even madder than Kate Blanchett. In a flashback to a traumatic incident in Nicholas Angel's past, he has a run-in with a Santa who stabs him through the hand. That Santa? Peter Jackson. You know, the guy who directed the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit trilogies? Suck it, Billy Bob Thornton. Your bad Santa ain't got nothing on Big Pete's. Number one, Tim Burton, Hoffa. Tim Burton likes death. Like, he really likes death. The living gothic Muppet has more than once demonstrated his playful fascination with deathly iconography in films like Beetlejuice, Corpse Bride, Sleepy Hollows, Vincent, Frankenweenie, Sweeney Todd. Even his more sunny films like Big Fish can't help but be about life slipping away from us. So when Tim Burton cameoed in Danny DeVito's movie Hoffa, coming out the same time as Batman Returns, it was in an entirely appropriate deathly way, with the director playing a corpse. In a funeral scene, the camera pans over a bunch of coffins. The final one contains little Timmy. Rest in peace, old friend. Unlike your current career, you're in a better place. And that's our list. Did we miss any out? Tell us about it in the comments and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And you can follow me on Twitter here. I'm Adam from whatculture.com and I'll see you soon.